Uh, I'd like to welcome you here to City Hall on August the 14th, 2014. Um, today, I guess, it's 100 years on since the starting of hostilities in World War I. Uh, so maybe 2014 will mean the day of peace going forward for the next century. The uh, issue of Ewing Street and the median has been a very emotional um, process. Um, it's a process basically that people have strong feelings on. And in the process of trying to make a clear-minded decision about this, the board itself has been very much like uh, the public, moving one way to one, uh, one side on an issue and then changing their tack based on different information, and then again now changing our tack again. But the sensitivity uh, that has been highlighted by some of the deeper thinkers on the council is that at the end of the day, this is a residential area, and the most important thing in the residential area is to listen to the people that live there. And enough of you have made your representation to members of the council and to myself to basically make it clear that these trees are held in deep affection by individuals for a variety of reasons, even though they're French. <laughs> um, I hope they're going to get their PRCs too. Um, you know, they'll be given their Bermuda status. But um, I think the council unanimously uh, has listened and. Uh, the uh, head of infrastructure with good counsel from a member who was always passionate about this from the beginning and always said, I want the, res uh, I want the residents on to know that on this particular issue that meeting should stay. Sadly, he was away in other parts and that representation wasn't made when once again new information was put for the board in the process of considering and we decided to think about taking the meeting out and the responses led to to this point in day. I guess one of the things that has to be said that uh, I have been brought to this decision by the weight of my full council saying that basically this is too important to be silly about trees. People have an affection for them, let's listen to them. There are also some people that basically we should also listen to too that we're for them to go. So I think that basically when we go through the next process, we should go back and talk to everybody on Union Street and get their full input and basically have the understanding at the moment that the trees are staying. But we should go back and talk to everybody on Union Street, go back to the drawing board and find a way to make this thing work with the input of the people that are very ably qualified in the neighborhood to have some input to it. Uh, that's, I think, that's where we are today. So from the point of view of uh, worrying about the trees coming out, from the point of view of the board, the trees are staying this present time. Okay? From the point of view of the process that will go forward is that uh, infrastructure will basically be handling this. Um, and we'll be making the recommendations based on the full input of members of Ewing Street. And hopefully, after another shorter period of time, rather than the year that it's taken us to get to this point back and forth, we'll have a definitive answer, and everybody will have been heard. Okay? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Let me first say that as chairman of the Infrastructure Development and Futures Committee, we did approve the trees to be removed through a resolution, as we do most things around here. And we did not think at that time that we were being led to believe otherwise that those trees need to be coming out or need to stay. Since which, we have heard from the public Certainly we have consulted. I have personally consulted with our consul. Um, not all the consul are here. And we have consulted with the residence committee gentlemen, these fine gentlemen who you see standing behind. And the general consensus is that those trees should stay. I, believing in the democratic process of listening, I did listen, I did hear, and I made the 
collective decision to go back to my infrastructure committee to apprise them of what I've been hearing. And we made a decision collectively to say to the public and to say to the residents, particularly those people that voted for us and otherwise, that those trees will stay. It is our responsibility to not only represent the voters in that area, but the city residents, period. This will be a milestone that will go down in history that we need to listen. And I think not just from our positions as council members, but I think the government too, those in authority, we must listen. Not just hear, it's a distinct difference between hearing and listening. Listening, I believe, is understanding the third letter in the fourth word. So we heard and we listened, and we're about to say to the public, those trees will not come down, not under my tenure. And I'd like to pass it on to my alderman, Mr. Carlton Simmons, who lives in the area. Alderman. I obviously echo all the sentiments that have already been expressed by the mayor and the deputy. But I would like to speak to some of the broader issues that this has brought to light. Um, I take this very seriously for several reasons. Um, as I said in my public remarks, I personally don't feel that this should have got to this state. Um, it shouldn't have to take people taking extreme measures to be heard, especially when these are the same very exact people that put us in power. Um, I was deeply offended when I was abroad hearing some of the remarks that were being made to council members by other staff members, uh, staff members to members of the public, taxpayers. Uh, I was very upset. And since which I've had the opportunity to speak to many of the residents who were there when things unfolded. And I understand that uh, the city has to do better. Um, quite frankly, some of the things that were said and done, and, I, and, and one person said, thank goodness the rain came. You know what I mean? So uh, I would like to take this opportunity personally to apologize to my mother on behalf of the Corporation of Hamilton for putting you in that situation and assure you that we're going to do a full investigation. And some hairs will roll as a result of this because whilst the trees may be French, right? It doesn't take uh, people to pretty much get out of their skin to be able to be heard. That's, that's not where we operate on democracy. And what makes it even more sad is that 90% of the people in this council got their exact nominations and votes off of that street from the very same people we were seeking to offend. So I can assure the public today that this is not over and that some of the things that have transpired will not happen again. And in particular, some of the behaviors that were displayed. So let this be a learning opportunity for us as, as Corporation Council. Let this be a learning opportunity for leaders in general that when you're elected, yeah, you have the sort of power to make decisions. But to be heard is more important than to dictate and give orders. So going forward, we're going to do better as a council, and we're going to put in place some rules that allow that to happen more seamlessly than this time around. Uh, I'm going to apologize to your mom, but did you feel you let your mom down after? I would, I would have to say yes. And I say yes because even though I have been given misinformation, and that's one of the things we're going to address through an investigation and, and find out where exactly, People were calling me and saying to me, you know, what about the trees and this, that, and the other. I had several residents beyond my mom come to me at my house. Uh, I remember one of the gentlemen who is from the, um, from the Jamaican Grill family came to my house, knocked on the doors, like, listen, man, these guys are knocking on the trees. What are you going to do? And I remember showing him that, oh, no, I've spoken to the engineer, and he's assured me that these trees are not going anywhere. That was misinformation. That information was deliberately asked for, and the information given to me was deliberately put in a way that they would be able to seamlessly do what their intentions were. And at the last minute, the information was presented that, oh, yeah, by the way, uh, the deputy and, and the infrastructure committee had agreed to get rid of the trees. But they knew from day one, from the first meeting we had with the residents, that that was something that they did not want. And so some of this is about deception. Why? I'm not sure. But why on earth would people take, you know, right now this, the situation's in court. You know, who authorized? the corporation to go up and re-up with lawyers 
against the very people who elected us. For crying out loud, people may not know it, my mother actually nominated Grand Mutterbridge to be the mayor. So the, I was very offended when I came back and to find out that he didn't even reach out to ask for a phone call to say, like, let, let's see if we can come to some sort of measure on this. So a lot of things have been revealed here that I don't think that people or this organization really gives the due to the people who put us here. It shouldn't have had to get to that level. And then staff members telling people, oh, leave her or we'll get you arrested and you people and just a lot of bad behavior was shown. So as an elected person, it's my job to make sure that this organization leaves a little bit better than how I found it. And our work has just begun. The trees is probably the easiest thing we've got to fix. What we do have to fix is some of the mindsets and attitudes towards the people of North Hamilton and like they don't have to jump up and down and, 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 and do, do extreme things just to be given the simple courtesies that we give to everybody else. I'll give you one example. When we decided that we were going to increase the, the taxes on the people who had signs up overhanging city properties, the awnings. The awnings. The minute we implemented it and they didn't like it, we withdrew it. We didn't go to court. We didn't make excuses about why we were going to stick to our guns because we had went through a process. We knew it was unpopular and we knew that the people who are taxpayers felt differently from us and we revisited it. And I don't understand why this wasn't done in this situation. So the, this, is, this is the beginning of a process. It's going to take days and weeks, but I can assure you we'll keep you updated. The main thing is the trees will stay. The main thing is that the residents need to know that they have a voice and they have been heard and that this council will do better to make sure that when things like this arise, they don't have to feel left out in the cool and have to take drastic measures to be heard. But this is really just the beginning of the process. Yeah. Thank you. Go ahead. Well, I think, I think from the point of view of falling protocol, I think, as you can observe, there's sometimes seems to be about six or seven mayors here, but we try we tried to do the best we can, but we have a lot of strong personalities here and people feel passionate about things and people question rules and act accordingly. Um, I think that it, I should say to counter what my alderman said, there was a long period of consultation about this. There was a process of meetings and decisions taken, difficult decisions. The fact that a very strong vociferous group has changed, changed the way that the decision was made shows that basically people that are representing the area are listening. I basically was one of the first people to vote for the median to stay. Then the median was being recommended by infrastructure to go. So, I mean, there's been some flip-flopping on this, and that's why I said in the process after you've signed contracts and you're moving ahead with things and you've put things in the paper and you've given everybody a chance to say yay or nay about something, some people were still not happy, and they have been very efficient about making sure that they want certain things to happen, and they've happened today because collectively we got together as a council and listened to what they said. But I don't think that it could be accurately said that the, uh, the process was basically not gone through. I think that basically in the, it, we need to go back still and really find out on the top part of Ewing Street because we have to see how we're going to uh, attack drainage, how we're going to help those trees do better in the medium where they are, and consult much more closely with the people that seem to have such a passion about that street. Um, one would hope that you get one message, but every, we're in a democracy, and I think there's strong opinions, and sometimes people are going to uh, clash on things. But I think anything that is looked at will be shared. As you know, in September, this is a totally open process. No meetings are closed. All the committee meetings are going to be open. So there's a new process coming to this actual council that has basically been uh, put forward by government, and that is coming this September.
Yeah, and let me just say this. With respect, and no due respect to my mayor, with respect to what the mayor just said about we were the ones that the infrastructure recommended, Mr. Mayor, that we um, go with the removal of the trees. No, we took our recommendation from our technical people who are the experts. We're not here to hold up any process, but we took the recommendation, Mr. Mayor, from our technical people who advised us in their arguments that the trees must be removed. It was only then that we supported, we supported what they were saying because they are the tax. And so um, we only follow what is being put in front of us. We make the collective decisions and thus <coughs> became the fact that we agreed to remove it. But like the mayor has said, and also Alderman Simmons, that's the foregone conclusion. Um, it's done. Those trees will stay. Not a single resident has come to me and said they want the trees to go. And I asked the mayor, I said, how many people have come to you and said that they want to stay, they want the trees not to go, or to go, or whatever the case may be. And the mayor couldn't say. He said, no, most people have said they want the trees to stay. So I don't know how the corporation even adopted the position that they should go. And I feel that the technical officers wanted them to go for their own reason, but from the time we decided to consult with the residents, they've always made it clear they didn't want the trees to go. So I don't know how we backed a position of taking the trees out when none of the residents gave us the authority to do so. Hey, That's important. It, it sounds like you're all on one accord. Well, this is why we <laughs> It is. <laughs> but <laughs> Travis, <laughs> Travis, <laughs> you're, yeah, Travis, you're absolutely right. It's not about six mayors. It's about facts. The deputy was correct. The technical people, we allowed them to consult with the residents. And all the feedback that I got from the residents, and it's no secret, I live on the road. I, I, people have access to me all day, every day. The feedback has always been from the very first meeting that they didn't want the trees to leave. We were getting feedback from our technical people saying that they had consent from all of the residents and that the trees were going to go and that they was cool with that. Come to find out that was far from the truth. This is what we're talking about when we say investigate. Now the mayor, um, respectfully believes that that process was legitimate in the fact that we had a process. But if the information being shared with individuals is not accurate, and it's clearly not accurate, else we wouldn't have come to this point, and that's the evidence that you're looking for, then we have to look at our staff and say, listen, how is it that we got this far under the uh, impression that you guys were dialoguing and everybody was well aware and that we have got their blessing and that's what you're communicating to the council so that when we get in meetings and, we, and they tell us that um, infrastructure, the recommendation is to remove the trees because the residents support the trees being moved and then we find out that's nothing further from the truth, we have to do an investigation. We have to figure out who gave um, that sentiment. But to this day, the American answer for itself, how many people have come in and said, we want the trees to go that are residents, because I haven't experienced any. Trees are part. I've not always been Eddie Dem with my colleagues in this uh, council, and I'm happy to be Eddie Dem with them on this issue. That's not important. I think the decision was right for us to reconsider. What I'd like to say is to all the very important people who did the real work, these gentlemen behind me, I see Ms. Ann Hine over there. Who else do I see? Yeah. Sherma, of course. Sherma, of course, <laughs> who put her, her, her life at risk. Mm -hmm. Those are the people who I think make the difference in this. You will appreciate that this is still not settled. Um, uh, but going forward, uh, I can support this decision absolutely. It's the right thing to have been done. Interestingly enough, my namesake mm -hmm, here, who, right. who has not always agreed, uh, we've not always agreed, we've been on the same page. This is the right thing to do. We're going to get that done if we get nothing else done in this city. And I think that ought to be the end of this matter. Otherwise, you might get a taste of just how we do business around here. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, a lot of mixed emotions. Um, I'm glad that we're saving the trees. That was the purpose of everything I did. Um, 
um, I'm sorry that I had to go through such a process to, like um, my son said, to be heard, but um, he's new at this game. <laughs> I had to go, I had to do circles and jump hoops before with the other mayor, so I'm used to doing this. <laughs> this is normal for me. So I don't want you to think that this is new just because it's this group. I've jumped hooped and did cartwheels and never got no action. So um, this is just how the Corporation of Hamilton has always done. And I'm glad to hear that someone's trying to make some changes because North Hamilton, not only did we do hard, uh, cartwheels, we did scoops and we did things you can't even dream of to get heard and never got heard. I just have a problem with a city that takes care of one group of people and refuses to take care of the other group of people. We pay our taxes, we do everything we're supposed to do, and we don't get hurt, seen, or nothing. We're having problems with Balco, we're having problems with Talco, we're having problems with Cable Vision. We're still trying to get what everybody on Front Street's been getting for years. So I have a problem with all that, that we have to um, go to the trees 20 something years later mm -hmm. to just get a tree saved. Mm -hmm. Maybe the trees will do some other things for us now because we've been fighting for not just trees, some other things too. <laughs> so um, I hope the door opens up for the other things as well. I just want to say to everybody, I hope that you do make these changes. I hope that you come together as a group of people and work as a team because I'm not trying to divide anybody was just a course that I believed in and when I believe in something I stand up for it and that's what people should do, period. And I want to thank you for allowing us to get our trees back. And um, I really appreciate that. Thank you, sir. But we got what we decided to be doing to do and glad we don't have to go to court now. Thank you very much. I would say this to you. Whenever you hear that within the corporation, that's normally a couple for somebody who wants to do something that they should not have done. Everybody around her knows how to contact the other guy. Everybody around her knows what people are passionate about. And at the end of the day, uh, I think some of the people in this room know full well that if some of the people around this table knew that they were going to proceed in the manner that they were going to proceed in, that this would have never gotten that far. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like some of us were deliberately kept in the dark and deliberately sort of sidestepped to achieve an objective of a few people that really don't have no skin in the game. And that's the biggest insult of all, is that why would you go to such great lengths to fulfill an objective that you don't even have to live with? The people on Ewing Street live there. They lived there for many years. Whatever reasons why they love their trees, the trees that I happen to play with and play in, is their business. And if you're gonna go into somebody's neighborhood and say, I wanna make it better, you should consult them and take into consideration their views. So that whole thing about minutes and stuff, that's, that's a tactic that's used in politics and in particular in this establishment to basically say, uh, if I don't want somebody to read something, I'll just send it out in an email and I'll call it email whatever and then fool, I'm not gonna read it. When we wanna communicate, we send emails and we say, listen, I just sent you an email, have a look at it, this is what it's about. If we read every single email we got, we would never stop reading. 